into the Earth's crust, two to five kilometers down. Chambers of granitic magma slowly cools and crystallizes. Small pods of pegmatite magma form. Surrounding molten rock cools to form granite. Magma inside the pods start to differentiate, forming a pegmatite shell. Fluids accumulate to form the start of the pocket. The fluid pocket begins to crystallize to form minerals and gems. The crystallization method now restarts. Basalt, which is also known as pillow lava, this is mid mid Atlantic ridge, and it is also found in the Atlantic Ocean. This one is white and has much more jagged edges due to the way it broke. And if you're looking down here, we have yet another kind of granite which has a bunch of different particles inside of different colors. Some of the other less popular kind of rocks is this andesite, this monazite, this gabbro, this cobatite, and this kind of this rock which has a very confusing name. And over here is one of my favorite rocks. It is the basalt I like this so much because of all the little air pockets and holes in the rock. This was caused because of rapid cooling that cooled so fast that it did not have time to all form together, leaving it with different kinds of air pockets. In looking down here, we have one of the most popular minerals. We have quartz. This, this particular quartz was found in the Bluebell Mine, British Columbia, Canada. And as seen from a couple other of the basalts we have looked at, we have this one here. Which is much different from the other one, which the other one had a bunch of small holes. This one has been cut open and cooled a little bit faster, causing it not to have as many air pockets. The air pockets that it does have are very large, as you can see. And another thing that you can see if you look at the back, there is a green kind of crystallization, crystallization starting, which is common because they're probably a kind of liquid that leaked into there, causing it to start crystallizing. Today, we have seen granite and we have seen quartz. But have you seen them together? Up here, we have seen granite and quartz equals cyanide. As seen down here, there is a display of this granite and quartz mixture, which you can see the different colored granite here, with the white quartz on the inside. This is very commonly used for tabletops and counters in your kitchen and home. I have a nice display of some igneous minerals. Looking at these, these are all unrefined. They are very colorful and very beautiful. These kind of rocks are very popular in jewelry, like this topaz. This topaz is also very common because it is part of the birth rock, like uh, monthly birth rocks, along with other, miner other minerals like amethyst, emeralds, and rubies. 
these are also some unrefined rocks. You can see there's some pink, you can see some blue. And back here we have a quite common one called muscovite. And looking down here, we have some pinkish red quartz. And that is caused with multiple rocks mixing together to make this kind of uh, pinky reddish color. And if you look over here, for the final part of this tour, we have three new types of granite. We have this type here, which is uh, a granitic pegmatite. It has different kinds. You can see a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, various colors. Over here, you can see a reddish black granite, which is uh, quite different than the other ones that we have seen. And this final one is uh, a graphic granite, which has kind of triangle-like things, and it is white with some brown in it. All of these granites are commonly used in buildings. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this exhibit. We'll see you next time. Scholar Selective Host signing off from the Canadian Museum of Nature. Thank you.